this has going on forever so decided to do something. I'm 16M, half Mexican from my dad's side, and my mom's side is Scottish. Most of my mom's family is a high-key idiot and has been a problem sometimes growing up. My grandma on my mom's side never liked my dad and was happy after they divorced when I was 7. My name is Emiliano and my grandma always complained about how hard she tried to change my parents' minds and it's a shame I got stuck with it. I'm actually proud of it. My dad told me about the revolutionaries I was named after in their history. But literally my entire life my grandma refuses to say it. She says it's too many syllables, I got a cousin named Alexandria and they say the whole name and always came up with her own names. She says Leo once tried to get everyone to call me Elliot as a nickname for a while. Obviously, my mom's family was for it, but my dad refused cause it's not my name. There's always the same thing when I see them. She'll call me Leo or whatever. Even when I correct her she says it's not a big deal and keeps calling the wrong name. I told my mom I don't like it, but she always says I'm just not gonna change her mind and had no point in fighting it. So I decided if she not gonna wanna call me by my actual name, I'm not gonna call her grandma or say her right name. It's stupid I know, but it's bothering me more that she doesn't care. She names all my cousins correctly, with no nicknames. Her name is Susan, so I decided to call her Sandy. To be honest I was scared to say it, but that look on her face was worth it. It wasn't a surprise Pikachu's face, but it was close. She said that is not how I address her, and it's grandma. I told her I'm calling her Sandy from now until she says my actual name. It got awkward. My mom was serious and my grandma got super red in the face. She started ranting about me being a disrespectful child and this is all my dad influencing me again. My mom told me I need to apologize immediately, but I dk what gave me the courage to not do it. We ended up leaving their house early and my mom didn't talk to me until we got home. She says what I did was out of line and I don't disrespect my elders ever. She wants me to apologize and I'm grounded until I do. Haven't talked to my dad yet about this since it just happened, but I wanted to ask if it was being an idiot or if was it okay for this situation to insult my grandmother. Not the idiot. She has had 16 years to learn your beautiful name and it's not that she can't. It's a choice. Sometimes your self-respect will seem an affront to others. That's their problem. Adults and the elderly don't like it when they're given a dose of their own medicine. Not the idiot. Emiliano is not a difficult name to pronounce and your grandmother's not respecting you when she's always mispronouncing it, so why should you respect her? It's a two-way street and you don't owe her respect just because she's your grandmother. Good on you for sticking up for yourself and calling attention to her crap. Why not call her abuela or abuelita? Sort of malicious compliance like. Not the idiot by the way, but I get you don't want to upset your mum. So, I, 28F, have a sister, 26F, who got married last month. I'm gonna be blunt my sister has always been one of those people that has to have everything perfect to the point, sometimes it was hard to be around her, but she was my little sister and I've no other siblings, so I always made excuses when she'd hurt me when I was doing things right in her eyes. I was kinda nervous when she asked me and my daughter, 4, to be bridesmaids in February because I knew she was gonna be a massive Britazilla. Over the last few months, we have had to practice multiple dances, pay for very expensive dresses, and put up with her tantrums. I told her from the start if she was any way nasty to my child I wouldn't stand for it, she assured me she'd never been nasty towards her favorite person in the whole world. Well, her now husband's little cousin, 8, started coming to dance practice with her mom, and my sister started to ask her to do little things like show my daughter how to throw the pedals. I honestly thought she'd make them both flower girls for a while, but when she started to make my daughter sit out and have the little girl do her poem, I knew what was gonna happen, but prayed I was wrong. I invited her out to coffee a few weeks before the wedding and asked her what was going on. She told me she was glad I brought it up because she was looking for the right time. Apparently my 4 year old wasn't doing everything right and she was afraid she was gonna mess up her version by saying the wrong thing or not doing the dance right on the day. I told her she's doing a pretty good job and everyone was always praising her. Sister giggled and said it's not their day now is it so it's not up to us what's good enough for her wedding. I asked her straight up did she think her niece wasn't good enough to be in her wedding. She replied not as something big as a flower girl but to attend. 
I asked her how was I gonna break it to my daughter who's excited about being in the wedding. She just told me to figure it out. I told her I'd give her a day to rethink her decision, if not we wouldn't attending not speaking to her ever again then left. Well, two days went so I couldn't put it off any longer I broke the news to my child. Even though I tried my hardest and sugarcoated it as much as possible the news still broke her heart. She cried herself to sleep, so did I and my husband. Well after a week when I was a no-show for anything my sister started to panic and started to get every to talk to me even drop off gifts for my daughter. When I told them why, a good number of our family including bridesmaids dropped out. We ended up going for a few weeks away with no phones. When we came back my sister had sent me multiple letters and emails apologizing. Her in-laws and husband have called me the idiot for doing what I did. Update. My bill saw this post and told my sister who cried reading all your comments. How do I know? Because they showed up at my job knowing I wouldn't want a scene. They begged me to delete the post before people they know to see it and kept apologizing, finally my sister said she might be pregnant. I told even if she is, pregnancy doesn't wash away all the crappy things she's did, and I hope her husband's siblings never treat her child the way she treated mine, because I don't plan to be a part of her life. She busted into tears saying she was sorry and that she loves my daughter. I told her to leave before I called security and her husband tried to talk to me alone because I was making her so upset and everyone was cold towards them because of me. I told them no everyone was cold because Cinderella and Prince Charming forgot that after treating everyone like crap that no one wanted to be in their happy ever after, they didn't like my mocking tone and raised their voice at me. My boss told them to leave who knows the situation and has a 5 year old herself, so she's on my side. My sister's mill reached out to my parents asking for everyone to meet up on neutral terms so we can all work out our differences. I am gonna go to this dinner party because I want to hear their story and officially tell them to leave me alone. Update 2. My sister's photographer saw this post and reached out to me on here, she knew my full name and she gave me her Instagram to confirm, this goes deeper than my daughter not dancing right. Apparently, she overheard my sister's mill and aunt-in-law talking in the bathroom, they used slurs against my daughter and husband. They called me the idiot. The photographer said they were both drunk, but Bill also made jokes around my sister earlier in the day which she smiled at. She also thinks my family members heard it and it's the reason they dropped out. So yeah my daughter wasn't a flower girl because unlike me, her aunt, or the other flower girl she doesn't have blue eyes and blonde hair. I thought I'd answer a lot of questions that keep getting asked. My parents are fully on my side so are multiple other family members, the ones that aren't have been cut off. My daughter doesn't know the full story, but as treat for all of us, we plan to take her to Disneyland for Christmas and my parents have said they will join us. I've seen a lot of people making fun of the fact that I and my husband cried ourselves to sleep the night my daughter found out. We didn't cry about her not being a flower, nor did we cry while she was awake. We cried because our child was extremely hurt and there's no worse feeling than your child thinking they're not good enough for someone they love. Not the idiot. OP was expected to bring the child to the celebration after being told she was no longer going to be the flower girl. Yay. She gets to watch another child do the thing she was so excited to do and not make a fuss. Get a babysitter. Great, watch her parents get fancy and leave to go to a celebration she is no longer a part of. OP's choice to not go to the wedding was correct. Her immediate family is more important than her sister. OP did not tell other people to not go to the wedding, she told them what happened when they asked. Everyone made their own decision. I am sure this was not the only crappy thing the bride was doing. Not the idiot. She can't expect a four-year-old to try everything perfectly, and you can't control what other family do after they hear about Britazilla. Not the idiot. Your sister asked a four-year-old a four-year-old. Then expected perfection. It's laughable. Yes, it's her wedding, but to ask a four-year-old to be a flower girl and go through everything when in the end she's shocked a four-year-old doesn't live up to her idea of perfection is just a idiotic thing. Your family asked why you weren't attending and you told them. You didn't ask them to boycott. They made their decision. Your sister sounds like a nightmare and a crappy person. Personally, I think it's cute when little kids go off script during weddings.
Lai, 47M, daughters, 17, best friends, 16M, parents are having some problems right now, so he stayed with me and will be for a few weeks. We have a very good relationship. I've known him since he was 5 and he's like a son to me. Ever since he moved in 2 weeks ago I noticed that he was looking kind of sick. I thought that he was stressed. In the last two weeks he has thrown up six times, his nose suddenly started bleeding, a lot, four times, and he's just always sleeping and doesn't have any energy at all, he's really cold all the time. I talked to him and asked if he wanted to go to the doctor, but he said he was just tired and probably ate something bad, and it wasn't serious. I called his parents just to let them know, and they told me that this has been going on for two months, but he says it's nothing and refuses to go to a doctor, and they can't afford it anyways, so they're not paying any attention to it. Asked my daughter about it too, and she told me that he doesn't talk to her about it. The day he threw up again and actually passed out. He's good now, but I told him that he had to go to the doctor, and I'd book an appointment for him. He got kind of upset and went to the room and isn't saying anything to me right now. My daughter said that I was too harsh and I can't force him to go to the doctor. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. This kid sounds seriously ill. It would negligent of you not to seek medical attention for him. It would be interesting if you posted an update because I truly believe he is going to get diagnosed with something serious, which could get much worse without prompt medical attention. If he's puking so bad he passes out, he needs to go to the emergency room. Ultimatum time. Either I drive you or I can an ambulance. He has cancer symptoms. Not the idiot. I don't know why he doesn't want to go to the doctor, but you'd be an idiot if you ignored it and did as he asked. Update. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone who gave me advice. We went to the doctor, he has been diagnosed with an eating disorder. I won't go much into detail. It was really hard for everyone, but he's getting the help he needs now, he goes to physical mental therapy, and he's slowly getting better. I'm paying for everything, and money is not the problem either. He's still staying with me, I talk to their parents regularly and they approve of everything, they're pretty thankful. My daughter apologized for thinking I was the idiot for getting him help. He knows we're there for him and hopefully he'll fully recover soon. OP is an angel. OP, I hope that every time you put on a pair of pants, you find a $20 bill in the pocket, and that every time any of your enemies use the toilet at a friend's house, it clogs and there's no plunger by the toilet, and they have to call for help. It's awful he has an eating disorder, but I am so so glad that it turned out to not be cancer, which was the concern of many in the first post. Kudos for getting him help and sticking with him, you are an awesome person and an amazing parent, even to extra kids. Caring for another human being is the opposite of being an idiot. I hope he recovers soon. Good on you, and thanks for the update. So I'm a stay-at-home mom with three kids. My husband works full-time and gets an okay salary, but he's tightened the grip on spending for the past four months to be able to save up to go watch the football event overseas. He's literally obsessed with anything to do with football. He said he rarely ever gets to do what he wants, and so I didn't want to judge him, since it's his money eventually. We discussed plans for Christmas, and he told me to handle everything since he won't be back till December 20th. He told me he had put aside money for Christmas decorations, food, gifts, kids' needs, etc. The money in total was $100. I was completely shocked I told him $100 for an entire family's Christmas celebration was ridiculously not enough. He shrugged saying it's all he's got, but I pointed out how he's paying for his friends and his girlfriend's travel expenses. He told me to just take it, but I said that if he decided to leave me with just 100 bucks, then I won't be doing anything for Christmas. We had lots of arguments and couldn't get this resolved. He's in Qatar now, he left days ago. Yesterday, while I was cleaning I found an envelope with the same $100 and a note from him telling me to make it work. I sent him a message that I decided that I won't be doing anything for Christmas with this little money, period. He was livid he just kept sending an angry message after another calling me spoiled and telling me to stop expecting to live like I was still living in my parents' house and to stop trying to rob the kids of enjoying the holidays like the other kids. I haven't replied, but he's livid saying I'm punishing him for going and trying to guilt him using his own money. Not the idiot, this sounds like financial abuse. 
Why is it his money when you are in charge of household admin and childcare? Well he waltzes off with his friends to pay thousands to watch a bunch of overpaid just kick a ball around a stadium built on eco-destruction and human rights violations. No sane person from the century could pull off Christmas with 100 bucks unless they go in for petty theft on a grand scale. Ultimatum time, he treats you as an equal financially or you leave and get child support. Not just that, he would rather pay for his buddy and his GF to travel than provide his kids with a decent holiday. OP you're not the idiot, and if you have any other family to spend the holidays with please do that instead. Not the idiot. As has been pointed out, this is called financial abuse. Take your kids, go to your parents, have a beautiful Christmas without your husband, and get a divorce.